I had a pound for every time somebody asked if I could put vitamins and minerals into a feed to help prevent infection and improve the health of fish, then I'd be quite a wealthy man. <laughs> the reason why I don't, it's like going to the doctors after smoking 100 fags a day, drinking excessively, eating awful food that's no good for you, and then asking the doctor, you don't feel great, what, what drugs can I have to make me feel better? You're not addressing the issue, okay? So a lot of fisheries will think that adding a magic feed will undo all the bad of the fisheries. Yes, you can add vitamins and minerals to a feed to get essential vitamins and minerals into your fish, but a healthy ecosystem will provide everything a fish needs in its diet. So it's all about creating a healthy functioning ecosystem to supply the essential vitamins and minerals and the nutrients that those fish need naturally. Because when you look at aquatics and the aquatic ecosystem, water has been on Earth for about, I think it's 400 billion years if you Google it, something around. I'm going to ask ChatGBT now. Uh, hey there, um, I'm just wondering, are you listening? How long has water been on Earth for, please? Hello, yes, I'm here. Water has been on Earth for a very long time likely around four billion years. We've been on this planet for millions of years. Humans have existed for millions of years. Uh, what about humans? Humans have been around for a much shorter time. Modern humans, known as Homo sapiens, have existed for about 200,000 to 300,000 years. Thank you. So the ecosystem has had a pretty long time to adapt of all that's thrown at it. The ecosystem has met vegetable foods, it's met cereals and grains through the bird droppings, through stuff that's blown in or washed in from, from the ground around it for billions of years. So putting a plant-based product into your environment, the ecosystem is going to be very adept at digesting that and converting it into nutrient for an aquatic ecosystem because that's how evolution works over billions of years. So. Why are we trying to interfere with this system that's working? I see people all the time putting dye into lakes to stop the sunlight. The sunlight has been going into lakes for billions of years to give life to the ecosystem that has been digesting organic matter in the aquatic ecosystem for billions of years. Yet in the last 10 years we thought, oh, suddenly we need something to stop that, because that's not on. We can manipulate the environment in our management plan to optimise the processes that evolution has developed for us. Every vitamin, every single mineral, protein and fatty acids that is essential to freshwater fish can be naturally provided in abundance within a functioning ecosystem. This is an ethos which I can prove to be true with the sheer volume of carp that reproduce naturally in my production ponds. When my carp spawn and the fry hatch, they're growing at an incredible rate and to do so they have a requirement for essential vitamins essential minerals proteins and fats if they're deficient in any of them then they develop deformities such as missing gill plates spine curvature or simply just express poor growth and underdeveloped immune systems i've never had a winter where i've not harvested thousands of naturally recruited carp from my ponds of sexually mature fish Carp which grow beyond £10 in their fourth summer, which is a growth rate that any fish farmer would hope for. Therefore, if my statement was wrong and vitamins and minerals were essential in the diet of fish, then the cracks would show in the quality of the offspring which would be evident after just a few months, let alone the four year growth trajectory. The system that I'm describing is a healthy outdoor ecosystem with a balance of aquatic organisms that all play a role in balancing water quality. This fully rounded ecosystem will provide everything that a freshwater fish will need. Otherwise, carp as a species, they just simply wouldn't exist. To explain what I mean about having a fully rounded ecosystem and a diverse ecosystem, I've got a pint glass here that I've pulled out the margins of the pond. I've got a little sample of pond water here, and you'll already, just from the camera there, be able to see there's a tinge to it, and that sort of grey green tinge is the single celled algae that you can't see with the naked eye but they just taint the water like that. Now if you take a closer glance at this glass you'll see the amount of Daphnia and copepods in here. Daphnia and copepods are feeding on those single celled algae. The primary source for those zooplankton, Daphnia and copepods, they're zooplankton. They're feeding on single celled algae. They're feeding on detritus 
broken down food. So as our feed breaks down in the water, they'll be feeding on the single particles of grain. So by feeding a fast breakdown pellet, we're feeding these guys as well. If we can keep these guys in balance, the zooplankton, then they're gonna keep the algae in balance because they're grazing on the single celled algae. By grazing on the single celled algae, they're absorbing all the nutrients from that single celled algae. Now, single celled algae is a superfood. It's really nutritious stuff. Good morning, you there? Good morning, I'm here. How's it going? I was just interested, what is the nutritional value of single celled algae in a freshwater ecosystem, please? Single celled algae are quite nutritious. They typically contain proteins. They can have around 50 to 70% protein by dry weight. Vitamins, rich in B vitamins, including B12, though the bioavailability can vary. And vitamins A, C, and E. Minerals, they often contain iron, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Algae are an important part of freshwater ecosystems, providing nutrition to various aquatic organisms. Anything specific you want to know about them? Oh, that's great. No, that's fine, thank you. Really rich in omega-3 and 6. It's the primary source of omega-3 and 6 for fish. We eat fish for their omega-3 and 6 value, the essential fatty acids that we can't find in many other foods, but fish are a very concentrated source of omega-3 and 6, essential fatty acids. The fish are actually getting their omega-3 and 6 from the plankton and the single-celled algae. So the primary source is the single-celled algae. If we can look after that, then we'll have a plentiful supply of omega-3 and 6 in our environment. These little guys, copepods and Daphne, are packaging that the essential fatty acids up. Hello dear, you couldn't tell us the uh, nutritional value of Daphnia in a freshwater ecosystem, could you? Absolutely. Daphnia, or water fleas, are a crucial part of freshwater ecosystems and have significant nutritional value. Proteins, Daphnia are rich in protein, which makes them an excellent food source for fish and other aquatic animals. Lipids, they contain essential fatty acids, including omega-3 fatty acids, important okay. for the development. Not you. Carry on. Of course. Daphnia are small crustaceans that live in freshwater environments and are a key food source for many aquatic animals. They are nutritious and contain proteins, high in protein, making them an excellent food source. Lipids contain essential fatty acids, including omega-3s. Vitamins and minerals provide important nutrients for other aquatic life. They play a vital role in the food web. Anything else you'd like to know? Cool. No, that's great. Thanks. And then there are bigger organisms which we can see with the naked eye grazing around beautifully in this sample of water. Now, a lot of people, when you see a big cloud of Daphnia, they get quite excited. But, but what I like to see is a nice consistent population of Daphnia throughout the pond. So wherever I take a sample, I want to see that, really. If you're finding big clouds of Daphnia in places or you're finding a population boom of Daphnia and copepods, then what you'll find is they'll overgraze their food. So when they exhaust that food supply, being the single celled algae, they will then start to crash. So when they start to crash, the algae will start to come back because they've not got anything grazing on them, on them anymore. So then you get these fluctuations in algae blooms, as well as fluctuations in Daphne and copepods that are grazing on the food that becomes available. So that's when you get inconsistent water quality by having these waves of algae, Daphne, that algae, Daphne, and that's when you're going to get lots of, throughout the year, lots of peaks and troughs in oxygen and the respiratory nature of algae. And if I left this glass to settle on the side, you wouldn't find much sediment because a lot of this is algae and daphnia. If you left this on the side and you had a lot of sediment settling, then that tells you there's a, a lot of suspended solids in the water. They'll settle to the bottom. The daphnia and copepods will be spread throughout the glass and the algae will also be spread throughout the glass. Now, if I put this in a dark room, the algae would die and eventually the daphnia and copepods would die. And that's exactly what I mean with our outdoor environment. We want to have maximum light and air, so the single-celled algae are thriving. We've got consistent single-celled algae throughout the year, consistent daphnia throughout the year, consistent copepods throughout the year, and then you've got consistent nutrition to our fish throughout the year. Balanced water quality, consistent diverse nutrition to our fish, a fully rounded ecosystem. That's what I mean. Fishery management is a skill of reading your water. Be grateful for the imperfections that appear because they exist to highlight an imbalance somewhere within your fishery. Instead of addressing the symptoms that you see, accept the symptoms as a sign of a deeper issue before reaching for artificial solutions that are foreign to the perfectly evolved environment. Changes to water quality are there for you to read and gain confidence in steering your water towards a healthier future.
However, there are two instances that are an exception to my rule. And the first one being in a domestic pond environment where you've got a recirculation system, the pond's being recirculated, therefore you've got filters which are biologically and mechanically filtering the system, you've probably got UV lights, and that's all to sterilize the water and prevent any ecosystem from maturing or developing in your pond. So if you're sterilizing the water like that, then you're not getting the food chain established as such. So the single-celled algae aren't able to develop, so you're not getting your plankton or zooplankton developing and maturing in that system. So you're not having this diverse nutrition available to your fish because you're sterilizing that water with those very adapt filters. So for the fish to get those essential vitamins and minerals and nutrients, they need to be provided in their diet. So that's the first exception. The second scenario where your fish might benefit from a vitamin and mineral supplement because they're defic deficient in their environment is very similar to the last scenario with a domestic recirculation system. That filter in an outdoor environment, the equivalent is weed. And, and all those nutrients being trapped inside the weed structure, that weed is actually filtering and sterilizing the water. Often you get very crystal clear water where weed starts to establish. That's because the weed is essentially a natural filter for the water. So those essential vitamins and minerals that your fish need will be trapped and locked into that structure. Yes, they, that structure is habitat for bigger invertebrates, which will have more of a nutritionally diverse spec to them but they're only useful to the fish if the fish actually physically consume them. But if you can create fertile water with zooplankton and phytoplankton, that's much more bioavailable nutrient that's more consistently available to the fish as they live and breathe. And that's essentially why I feed a fast breakdown pellet because I'm trying to get fish to graze for longer to stop these weed beds from establishing getting the fish to work into the substrate to release the nutrient and help these zooplankton and phytoplankton to establish to create a more rounded, fertile ecosystem where everything exists in balance. One, two, one, two. Happy, 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 feeling so happy. Happy, 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 feeling so free. Sappy, 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 feeling so sappy. Sappy from the monkey around the show. Feel what you feel, but it's how you deal with your feelings. I'm probably seen in the industry as controversial. I have a lot of people that don't agree with what I say. I agree with what I say because it's literally we've arrived and commercialised this sector of fisheries in the aquatic ecosystem and suddenly we've designed products and, in, and invented products which the, the ecosystem hasn't needed for millions of years, billions of years. So to me, I think we need to work with the natural environment. We haven't ever needed to include vitamins and minerals into aquatic diets for billions of years, so why start now? Why don't we work with the system, work with the systems within the aquatic ecosystem, the organisms, understand what they want, what they need, what they're trying to do, understand the job that they've got and help them out, just give them a hand.